Hey everyone, my name is Nikos and together we're going to go over game production um, while Kofony will be making videos about how you can use zebras, okay? So, because we saw that so many people were wond wondering how you can apply all those things into a game production, first of all I want to talk about some basic things and since this is just an intro I would just like to show you some simple stuff from the first video. Okay, so let me go on this file and okay, maybe before I go here, let's talk about some simple things. We all know that there are two industries, the film industry and the game industry. And while you can work in both um, typically, technically you'll need some extra knowledge when you go to game industry or when you go to film industry because think some some areas are a bit different one of those areas of course as you all know is the poly count okay but um, talking about the poly count um, that doesn't mean the topology for example is uh, different the way you model is different or anything like that uh, mostly uh, you have the same topology, but it's more dense. Um, don't forget that a very basic, actually, um, uh, you know, uh, very a very basic uh, fundamental thing to know is that you you must think from small to the big and from big to the small. Okay, so it's actually adding more geometry. Is, uh, is not going to, to change the path, okay, of the models. That means the topology, because topology is actually the path the, the quads are following, okay? So let's start with uh, something basic. Um, let's say we start with this image. Okay, so this is a, a simple image, actually, I made. A simple render in Blender. And um, it, the, the purpose goes to make something like that in a very, very fast. The deadlines were were very bad, actually. I think I, I finished this piece in two days. Yep, four hours each day for two days. Yeah. So we see here that okay, it's a really nice futuristic scene. Uh, the purpose wasn't to be realistic because we didn't have time for that but um if you want to resize this okay so this is a nice image okay very nice you see all those glows and reflections and you can definitely so you can definitely uh understand that this is supposed to be for a cinematic scene and indeed it is so let's see the geometry of this okay if you let me take this and scale it down as well okay bring it here oops we don't want to make this full okay and move this a little bit on the corner right here okay so here it is pretty much and let's see what's going on here actually you can see the geometry clearly, I suppose, and um, let's see how dense all of this is, okay? You can see even for the floor, because I didn't want to download textures actually, uh, because I wanted uh, this to be really fast done, and, I, I, you know, when, when you get into the process of texturing, you have to choose the right textures, and there's always some cleaning work to do with them, and in order to make them better so I just actually made the the tiles 3d as you see here maybe if you let me zoom okay so you can see those edges going in the middle like here okay and um, also the cylinder has what exactly uh, the edges the poly tents it needs Okay, and actually it could have even more, but since the 
the shot w would be from this angle and we had all those effects and lighting stuff uh, those polygons were exactly what we needed okay and although you can see how dense here uh, this cylinder is because they needed to to seem a real high high poly and they are actually they are so dense that if I zoom you can see only a purple line here but this is a cylinder okay here in the middle and let's say also you can see how dense those poly those uh, cylinders are okay real nice done the wall behind has also some lines going in here some edges okay you can see here you see this okay and of course those those clocks here okay if I can zoom okay this is not actually the best reference to show you the geometry but it's going to do the work for now here you can see the clocks that they have geometry and actually I made the text for the numbers there but because um, it goes summer and I couldn't render this um, in very high sample numbers not all the geometry was um, you know displaced as it should be but you can see here I have a pointer I have the numbers which if I could zoom you would see there is a glass in front of those to make this nice reflection when you see them from uh, a distance Ref reflection and refraction okay also those cylinders here are supposed to be lamps okay those are really shiny uh, okay let's see you can see here the letters the same way I made them for the numbers here and it says sector 2 let me zoom in and you can see it right here so yeah it looks pretty good when you render this out because this is a meat this is a geometry which emits lights okay light uh, also the wires has a lot of geometry you can see here how dense they are okay if I zoom in of course, those oh, everything could, could be better in this scene, but like I said, I had only two days to do that, and when you have high school in background, it's not that easy actually. So I did my best. Um, okay, you can see here those uh, planks, those metal planks also. Those didn't have that that much that much geometry, but what I could do, it could be add some bevels to the edges so I can get that really great light to show that this is a, me a me you know a metal piece um, but once again I, I say that um, the time wasn't enough to think all those stuff and I was just wanted to make uh, something really fast okay you can see here the geometry on the wires on the wall as well the metal bar in front of the big pipe here you can see that this is quite dense and um, of course those reels tracks or whatever they are here okay and of course some wires you can see how dense the wires are there pretty much okay and as you can guess of course um this is actually let's say a lot of polygons i think this should be around uh, half million of polygons maybe i don't know i don't remember actually maybe uh not that many but yeah it was quietly high so um by the way those as you can notice there are some um, post effects in this okay there is color correction um, what else let me see there, is, there are glares and glow effects like those purple um, 
you know, those purple actually uh, stars there to show that this is a metal. It's a bit stylized, okay? The purpose goes to make a nice stylized sci-fi look. And I think for the most part, I, uh, this, this image actually can show something like that. Like I said, I, I could add bevels to some things like the bolts here and, the, uh, and there. But still, I think it works quite good for our example in this tutorial. Uh, the purpose, of course, is not to show you how the post effects and all of those stuff were added here. It's just to show you, to comp to show you the difference between film resolution models and game one. Okay, so this is actually a cinematic resolution image. And yes, it could be better and we're going to go over scenes like those in future, but for games, actually. Okay, so... Let me actually go here and pick up another cinematic resolution one model. Actually, it could be game resolution as well. So, okay. This is another example. This is a hand with nice... No, actually, this is... Okay. This is not the hand with the right topology, uh, but anyways, it is a good example. So you, you see here that star line. Well, that's not correct. It should come like this and connect here to the arm. But anyways, that's that's okay. Uh, let's don't worry about that. Actually, now it's not the right time. So yeah, uh, this is uh, a high resolution model. You see, when I have made details for the nails here, okay, um, and of course tried to make it as 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 good as I could. Uh, so here you see that this is really high resolution mess, and it's really dense. So let's bring now a game resolution one, and actually this is for games. So this is a model I made for games. Okay, let's get rid of all of those images. So this is a model, a prop that I'm making for a Christmas themed game that I'm working on. Okay, so yeah, you can see here. Um, so you can see the geometry is really low and that's because Although phones are getting more powerful, they are still a little bit weak compared to the PC um, platform. Because in PC, the geometry, the dense of geometry is not that that um, you know heavy that um, it could slow down your game. Instead, the shaders could, but not geometry. Although, the, despite that fact, in um, here, in this um, example, because th this is a prop for mobile games, you can see that this is lo very low resolution. And I think it's yeah, it's under 500 vertices. It's uh, almost 400, almost. Okay, and okay, it's uh, actually 464. That's okay. That's a cool. Um, poly count for a, a simple model like this. This is supposed to be a base where the player, the elf, will come over with his vehicle and when he will, the programmer will make a script and when the player passes over this, then it's going to give him, um, you know, some um, extra health or accelerated uh, speed for his vehicle and all of those stuff. So, this must be around uh, 500 polygons in general. That was my budget, the maximum amount that I wanted to go with. So, and I actually made it. You can see here, I'm into the budget completely. Okay. So, <clears throat> if I go here, you can see here that um, 
compared to the other cylinder from the other um, project those are much more uh, low resolution if you if you count one two three four five six seven eight okay maybe let's start from here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah those are ten actually faces there okay and the big one has even uh, I think the big one has fewer but I'm not sure anyways I think it has six maybe not six yeah I don't remember how many they are there but I know that they are uh, they are enough to stay into the budget okay so you can see that this is low resolution one and that's one of the biggest um, difference when it comes to film and games okay so let's see something else let's see for example a gun like this okay so this is a an mp5 model and you can see I don't have wireframe of this actually because quite a long time ago but anyways you can see that all the basic details are in there so I could actually bake from this the, it would, there's some work more. To, there's some more work to do with this, of course, to bake properly, like subdivision and all of those stuff. And yeah, because now the edges are too sharp, and the model wouldn't take those details. Mm -hmm. But w what what someone would really interested in is your ability in general to produce high resolution models. Okay, because Everyone can uh, model low resolution ones, but not high resolution ones. So, yeah, in general, they probably would find someone uh, who could uh, bake the normal maps from these. However, that I wouldn't recommend you to. Actually, there's no any modeler who can model high resolution one and is unable to, uh, you know, to model the low resolution one okay so this was an example the mp5 another example is the a car ring okay high resolution car ring okay this is not actually yeah I haven't subdivided the rim this is just let's say a medium resolution one except those uh, trails here or whatever they are uh, those curves into the surface of the tire okay but let's move to check the rim okay so you see the rim actually is not that high resolution uh, model okay it could this could be used for game at least uh, speaking about that at the moment uh, because in games like, for example, Grand Theft Auto or games like those, those are too many polygons to handle for the game engine. You have, uh, you know, all those people passing uh, around you, other so many other cars, traffic cars, and um, buildings and whatnot, actually, and all of those effects. So that would be really high, high resolution model for that but in general yeah this this is a K model for a game but not for a film okay because for a film you would have to go in there and start beveling this okay yeah you would you would have to start beveling this out so you know because bevel it's going to give you that nice highlight at the edges okay so let's see something else now now I want to speak about dynamics and zebras and with that said let me start zebras okay and show you a good example the first thing I want to talk about is topology because this is something w which is very um, you know misunderstood by a lot of beginners okay so I will as an example, I I will bring in uh, a grip model from a weapon, from an R15 model. Okay. 
think this must be. Yep, this is what I want. Okay, let's use this as a start. So you see here how nicely this is done and the purpose of this project that is currently in progress, I'm working on it, is to make a full R15 model very detailed, okay, with all the details a real object would have, a real um, R15, okay, so let's see. You can see that, okay, maybe first of all I need to turn on the polyframe. Actually, this is the decimated one, and I don't want the decimated one. Okay, others. Others. Hmm, how come? Okay, maybe Z tools. Creep. Not, I don't want this. Don't look at it. Okay. Uh, let's say low receiver, no. Hmm. Maybe it's uh, uh, an OBJ file. Okay. Okay, let's see. Maybe the grip one. Now, this is the low resolution one. By the way, I imported these uh, in Zebras. Okay, guys. And once I imported this in Zebras, I made my medium resolution you saw before but in that case in this case it's not what I want let me find the right one so let's say not handle grip right grip base uh, maybe the grip base was actually the mess I was talking about before okay no actually that's not the right one this is the part which goes under the uh, yeah, under this part here, maybe. Um, okay, maybe just let's import it. This this is a good example. If it goes right, of course. Okay. Load to. Okay, three D model. C2, lower receiver, creep, R15. Hope this is the right one. Yeah, this is my example. Let me see if I open. Yeah, this is the right one. I'm just going to change my material here so you can see better actually. Okay. Awesome. So, let me get rid of the base messes. Or whatever, maybe transform, quick expose. Yeah. Okay, let's bring that together. So, this is a grip model, high resolution one uh, that I made after I imported uh, that one you saw there, actually. Okay. Uh, that one you saw before. Okay, so and although it looks good, I mean, okay, let's like I said, the purpose is to make a really high resolution model of R15 with all the parts, um, even the inner parts. This part here and this, the lower receiver in general and the reloader are just the base meshes. Okay, so if I press um, Shift and X, this is going to expose everything again. You can see here all the tools and all of those stuff. Okay. This is work in progress, I say once again, but um, okay, if if you actually if I actually turn off the um, the handle here, you can see even that I have cut it details like this this piece here so that pin can go in there as in the real model uh, happen. You can see there the washer 
this is something that goes under the reload there's something like an extra thing that can hold um, something like um, I, I don't remember exactly right now but that's okay um, but um, yeah it goes under re the reloader I don't remember which uh, which which type of creep is this but I can tell you that th this is Moe uh, the manufacturer which creates this okay so let's focus on the grip for now so if I press hit shift and F you can see the polyframe that the dynamics has produced and well actually, actually before I explain that let me let me talk about the mess itself so you see that everything is really nicely cut like it like they should be in the real world you can see all the details here on the side of the grip here this this kind of pattern of uh, you no know, leather pattern or whatever it is here and in front oh, you can see how nicely this is done and of course you can see even this crease line sometimes on the middle the plastic uh, stuff have okay even this line is there or you see here and here and here but um, okay you can see all the shapes inside here done but there's a problem here I mean, let's say you're going to pro to, to represent this in a high in a real high quality production, and your employer told you, well, I need you to create a real high resolution model of an R15. Let's say as an example, and you tell the, him, well, okay, uh, I will do it. It will take time, of course, because it's not an easy task to make models like these. Okay but I can do it if you give me the right deadlines and you have you have ended up with this okay and you can say well I'm sure that when I read apology this it's going to be just okay or at least you can say this is the high poly so I will read apology make a low resolution one and just bake my info but let's see what's going on here look how bad the edges are okay look all the lumps okay those are not nice not at all this doesn't look like like a metal or plastic uh, material or you know or, or a, a plastic or metal material uh, thing or object whatever you want to call it it looks really bad, it's really lumpy and if I go to the downside I mean, come on, look at all, all this bad tessellation and that's because mostly we have not enough polygons because Dynamus actually I'm not going to speak about Dynamus uh, right now before I jump into the diagram I made for you guys just keep in mind that this is caused by because of dynamics and because we have not topology this this is generated topology by dynamics I, I just focus on the shapes let me jump into now the dynamics diagram here it is dynamics pros and cons let's start with the pros the first thing is that it unleashes your creativity it gives you freedom it makes you feel relaxed the second one is the second pro is that it lets you make boolean operations. It's time efficiency. You can block out complex shapes easily. And the third one is that you can define medium resolution shapes. And all of those stuff are actually mean that it lets you focus on the shapes and not the topology. Okay, this is the pro, the pros let's see the cones now and you can see actually all those all those things here 
boolean operations, I used objects to cut my geometry properly, I extruded uh, the faces here for the sides, I made my detail like the letters, and I was just focusing on the shapes I'm going to achieve and not the topology. Okay, because if you see here, yeah, we don't have topology here. So, those are the pros, and you can see I have defined in medium resolution all the shapes. Let's see now the cons. So, if I go here, and let's see, cons, it produces sand guns, actually that's not correct, it doesn't produce sand guns, I think, so exclude that. Uh, it produces triangles and diamonds. Diamonds are 45 degrees rotated quad. Okay, you pretty much try to make a polygon, a quad, and then rotate it 45 degrees, and that will create you a diamond. Okay, and triangles and diamonds are those which uh, cause the bad tessellation on this down part, right here. Okay, you can see here the bad tessellation if I turn on this. Let me see. You see triangles? Okay. You see how many triangles here? Um, bad edge flow and vertices flow really bad. I think here there's a diamond I can show you. This is a diamond here, this. You can see what the, what the quad diamond is. This is Okay, a diamond can connect two, two quads together, and that's why dynamics use this, this method. Okay, so it produces triangles and diamonds, the first column. The second one, it scatters even amount of polygon across to your model surface. And I have put something here, which is not actually completely correct, but it will get you to a point of how Dynamics actually works. It's not completely accurate this, but I, I just want you to get pretty much a way to simulate in your mind how Dynamics will work. Let's say you have a plane with height and width, and Dynamics is going to say, well, you have uh, height, let's say 5000 polygons, and the wide of your uh, plane has 3000 polygons. Okay, so set me a resolution, and I'm going to set to you. You all know, I suppose, what the resolution is when you use Dynamics. Let me show you here. If I go to Geometry, Dynamics, you see the resolution here Dynamics resolution. and it's going to say, well, this is the ratio you have, and this is the the poly count you have given me. Actually, resolution is something like uh, polygon budget, okay? So, it m Zebras tells that, okay, we have uh, this budget, and we have this ratio, this scale of the object, so um, multiply height by width, and then divide that with the resolution, and that's going to calculate how many polygons will be spent equally to each amount, to, to each area of your model. Okay, and that gives us result A, not topology specialization choices. I will go in, I'm going to explain that uh, after we finish this diagram. And it also goes laggy interface, no subdivision settings. I'm also going to explain that. And the third one, and most important, it goes lumpy surfaces, okay? At least if you don't have a um, high number of polygons, I think 3 million is a good start around there. But still, uh, it's not going to be mathematically accurate. So I'm going to open Photoshop, oops, not this one, to explain the two things about the specialization of topology and the uh, 
like interface. Okay. Also, the laggy interfaces makes uh, zippers to crash really often. That's not the easy way to work with. So, let me plug my tablet. Okay. Yep, it's plugged. Oops. So, let's see. Uh, topology specializations. Let's say we have. Okay, make. Let me create something like a box like that. Okay. Uh, let's say that actually this is a cube, okay, and you're going to to make some uh, edge loops running on here, here, oops, here, and let's say last here, okay, and let's create now some. Uh, Some vert, some horizontal. Okay. So this is how Dynamics is going to to work out actually. Okay. You set the the white height, then multiply those and divide them by the resolution, the budget of your polygons. So let's say now that you want to create actually here. Uh, a break or some details here, okay, this part. So what Dynamo is going to to say is that well, um, there's there's that detail here, that crack added here. So uh, in order to to depict the detail with new geometry, generate more um, more uh, more vertices, more edges here, more loop cuts, okay, then. Do, do it like that and now it's not going to say well that's okay you have something left here so just create a line uh, go like this in the middle to make that corner instead it's going to do the opposite thing because you have some look cuts here and you have to connect them it will add more look cuts actually like that okay and because it wants to uh, to throw equal amounts of polygons across to your surface, okay? So it's going to work like that, and that's not efficient. And also, it will, in order to to avoid this process, it's going to make diamonds here, triangles, and what not. A lot of triangles, diamonds, and all of those stuff. Instead, when you create topology by yourself by retopologizing or using uh, or do it by hands. I usually like to do it with hands when it comes to hard surface objects usually um, and sometimes for organic mesh as well although the zero mesh is, is just awesome but sometimes I like to have full control okay let's say you have the same thing here I'm just going to create a simple one okay and you have all those stuff all those edges going here in the middle okay okay just just try to do it this fast let's say you have something like that and you want to make this have a crop okay so this is supposed, let's say, cracked. What you can do is create a polygon here, add a loop cut here, and that's it. You have connected this because you have uh, set it. Uh, you have made the topology specialization. Okay. You have less geometry going in this place, and you have more to go on this. On this place here, it's like that. Um, that you have see. Do you start from a polygon, extrude it, and um, okay, maybe let me do it again. You have a polygon, extrude it like this, then create these and extrude that, 
one more time then do that okay okay and you see that I just ended up using from one polygon I have three more look at to do um, let's say a crack here maybe or whatever you want to do okay just from one polygon you ended up using three loop cuts for your crack this is what I like to call uh, polygon specialization okay because the form takes a specialization it is designed to represent a specific shape instead in dynamics it's not if you, the same thing in dynamics would be something like um, okay you have this let's uh, have some lines going here uh, okay let's say you want more um, well you have this budget so I'm going to add some vertices like like this okay and add more for the wide and it's it would do it like that but you don't want those middle ones and you don't actually need those vertical ones for the other part okay so this is about um, topology specialization where dynamics is wrong okay so let's talk about the laggy interface the laggy interface actually means that when you have a model with let's say x polygon count polygon uh, and this is the dynamics okay and you have a y polygons amount with uh, subdivisions oops subdivisions that means levels like LOD it's not exactly LOD actually it's not LOD but anyways I just try to make it uh, familiar for you if you know what LODs are they are actually level of detail for in games so depending on the distance it, it drops the pole count and the texture size so here when you navigate into your 3D space, this doesn't have, um, you know, levels to drop, so it's going to remain the same. Okay. Instead, here there are lower subdivisions, so Zebras knows that while you navigate into your 3D space, you're not actually going to to sculpt. It's not possible to move and sculpt at the same time. Okay, so it automatically will drop the subdivision from a high subdivision to the lowest one okay or at least to a lower one where it doesn't have that much performance heat okay so it will drop sub sub d i will just write sub d it's not sub d something else but anyway this is just um a circuit and you can see that if I try to move here, um, okay, maybe if okay, I will bring up the other guys. You see that now it's laggy because I have more uh, things into my 3D space. It's not completely laggy yet, but you see it starts to get a little bit laggy and imagine that though those are not high resolution ones the lower receiver and the reloader imagine what will happen if I going to make changes and have all the, my sub tools um, activated and uh, visible in the 3d scene it's going to get a lot of lagging instead and of course the th the third thing is the lumpy surface. A good example of lumpy surfaces is here, this part here. Okay, so uh, let's say you, of course, you can smooth. That would fix the problem up on the point, but then now it doesn't look like 
a plastic or metal accurate cut piece, okay, from a factory. And you have two options now. The first option is to sit down and think a way to fix that. And the second thing is to represent this to the people. Personally, when I made this, I thought after I saw that I, I went wrong with the topology here and I needed to create actually uh, a more specified topology because I, did, I don't have um, that powerful PC to, to run 3 million polygons for each sub tool. Um, yeah, in dynamics mode, of course, at least. Um, I, I thought a way to fix that. But before jumping that, I, I told to myself, well, you can't be serious, right? In high production, you're going to represent something like this. What, what, what's that? That's unacceptable, okay? That's completely unacceptable. And when you're going to, to bake um, high resolution, um, you know, uh, details to the lower one, well, that, that, that's going to be unacceptable for any kind of production. People may not see, see it, then you're okay, but believe me, those, those kind of things are going to make a lot of artifacts, okay? And also, it, it actually shows to the people that you're not, to, it shows to, the, to your employer that you're not in the position of solving problems, okay? And in general, solve problems and have a good eye for details like those, okay? So, I want to talk about how we can solve a problem. Let me create a simple diagram. We have a problem X, so I will write problem X, and you're going, and you're going to go to the solution, okay, solution, Y. So this is a logic diagram actually, and believe me, um, in 2014 people don't think that logic logical as they should be and sometimes either I do but let's try to make a diagram to see how we have to work in general okay so you're going to go from problem X to the solution Y but in order to have that you need something to go here from the middle you need to put something in the middle which is knowledge Okay. Okay, let me write this down. But in order to have knowledge actually, you need something else which will come from um you know uh let's say hmm, flexibility actually. actually no I don't want to Okay, maybe I should create another diagram. Like this leads to flexibility. And flexibility leads to have to find ways to solve a problem. Okay, because you're flexible to do that. Actually, I will write something else you can make experiments I'll just write exper and you know and predict results okay and that of course leads to Okay, to a solution. This is my um, okay. I'll get rid of this. This is my logic actually uh, plan. Okay. Okay, let's 
put this in a box here okay maybe bring that up to here make this overlay make this overlay as well anyways it's Let's don't care about that. Yeah, I'm not going to spend more time with that. Um, okay, so this is my logic plan in general. Oops. This is how, in general, I think to solve a problem. Okay, you have a problem X and you want to go to a solution Y. To go from a solution X, to, to go from a problem X, in a solution Y, you need something in the middle, which is knowledge. And knowledge will bring you flexibility. And flexibility is going to give you the opportunity, the skills, to make experiments and predict the results. And that will lead to the solution Y. That's my plan, at least. Every artist has his own uh, plan. So, we, we talked about a lot or how to solve the problem, the topology issues, the pros and cons of Dynamis. And the last thing I'm going to show you for this intro, because this is just an intro, okay? To test if you like this series, guys. We're going to, to go much more in depth of um, game production. If, if you like, in general, the idea and like this video. So, let me import now the right model quick and here it is boom <laughs> okay can see how everything is fixed now no lumpy surfaces anymore isn't it nice defined shapes real nice defined shapes Okay. You can see even the leather detail is much better. Okay. You can see how really and you can even subdivide if you want one more time. Okay. If I press Shift F now. You can see how nicely my shapes are now. How nicely they're done. Let's actually jump to the lower subdivision while we don't need that high one. And you can see how nice shapes I have here. Really nicely defined shapes. Okay, so those are going to bake really well. Of course, we will need to, to blur some edges like here like this way so it can you know uh, bake properly because sharp edges are going to cause problem when you you bake artifacts and all of those stuff but for the moment I just want it to be like that the policing work can be done in the end you can see how how beautiful now everything works no lumps no body tessellation no triangles I can easily navigate also because you can see it drops level levels of detail like I'm when I'm navigating. If I zoom here in the leather, take a look, drops the detail when I want to navigate, and when I stop to navigate, it's really nice leather effect. Okay, let's change the material to something else. Now that's not nice. Great. And um, you can see here how everything has become better. Real nice. If I go to to subdivision one, this is the retopology I did using the previous model. 
and I decimate it. Okay. Okay. This is what I I got out. Okay, not exactly that because now I have scaled it to high resolution uh, levels, so those are going to go from the high to the lowest. You can see here all those uh, wrinkles. That's because uh, of the high one. Okay, but yeah, I took the the basic me the base the medium resolution mess I did in um, in zebras after dynamizing the base mess I did in Maya for getting the proportions of, of out of an image then I imported something like that in the zebras made the, the the poly groups and then I creased okay I went to crease and crease poly groups borders okay and this is actually what I got out what I I got out pretty much from my after it topology this. You can see here how nicely those those faces are done. If I go to highest one, you can see now how nice it is. And of course if you like, you can let's say take something like that and see sub and start adding details like um drop this on the Maybe you can go to alpha, you can go to modify and let's say decrease the radius a bit. Okay. Some noise, contrast. Okay. and you can start putting details there for the plastic um, like a scratches and all of those stuff of course those are really deep ones if you drop a little bit the subdivision here oh and go to the highest of course bring that a little bit up spray this this could look even as a skin actually. Yeah, it could be even like a an alpha for under the skin, but you can go there and start um, smoothing out everything that you don't like. This is like a couchuk actually make details like those in general I think you got the point um, adding logos and what what not actually okay let's say you want to add something like something like a small bolt or anything like that seriously you're free to do it um, let's say something like this and yeah in general anything you would like uh, really anything you can go here select an alpha and um, start creating this. by the way I did the the leather effect using this alpha here after I modified the bit to my needs okay so yeah you can add some nice details to the plastic and uh, couchic or whatever this is uh, details like like these okay but uh, I don't want to add extra details than those I have right now so I'm just going to get those back and pretty much we came to the end of course this isn't done yet okay because you need to retopology this okay we made the base mesh in Maya to get the proportions out of an image for the grip then we made the mid resolution in zebras then we exported to retopology 
this to get the basic shapes then brought it again in ZBrush to add the details and now it needs again to 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 become to make a low resolution one that could be easy you could have uh, you are going to have more much more let's um, look at here at the middle just need some some basic ones um, but this is pretty much the workflow that you need to find here the problem was the topology okay and here uh, my knowledge the knowledge I used was the topology knowledge okay and here's the flexibility came from the topology actually knowledge okay and that flexibility uh, gave me the opportunity to to guess to to make experiments and and guess the and predict the result and those experiments were done in my mind actually before I apply those into the 3d space okay and that brought me the solution uh, which was non lumpy surfaces which was my primary actually uh, concern Okay, so that goes um, the intro. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. If you like this, please uh, write a comment if that if you if you like this and you want the series to go on. Uh, me, me and company are going to make uh, a lot of videos for you guys. So thanks for all your support and don't forget to subscribe. To subscribe, okay. Thank you for watching this, guys. Bye.